you don't want to say what you really think. So he's either lying or he's, he honestly doesn't know what the purest form of Christianity is. Take your pick. Take your pick. So he says, I don't know if it's the purest form of Christianity like I grew up with. But you know what? I know Mormons. I hear Mitt Romney. And I've never met him. But I hear him say, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he's my Savior. And that's one of the core issues. Unless it's the wrong Jesus. Unless it's the wrong Jesus. Is there another Jesus? The biblical answer to that is yes. There is another Jesus. And so Osteen believes that Romney and he worship the same Jesus. I agree with that. I think they do. I think that Osteen and Romney worship the same Jesus, but not the same one that is delineated here in this book. And if you don't happen to be watching, you're just listening, I hold in my hand a 1611 Keaton James Bible. It is the pure word of God. It will tell you the difference between the real Jesus and the fake Jesus. And I, I, I am dead, I'm dead serious on this. I get a lot of people who send me uh, articles, uh, want me to watch YouTube videos, um, send me videos to watch. Oh, Pastor Mike, this, this person here, they really got some really, really interesting stuff. I want you to listen to this. I want you to watch this. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be mean, but I am going to be stern and I'm going to stand steadfast. Um, if I go to a website or you send me a book or, or whatever it is and are watching a YouTube video or a DVD and automatically there's, they start, I don't hear this, the shepherd's voice, uh, the shepherd's voice, according to what I read here says thee and thou. Okay. It says thee and thou. And when I hear scripture verses and they're not using that. I, I usually just, I, I don't spend a lot of time with it because I don't, I absolutely don't trust any other translation of the Bible or any idea or philosophy based upon another translation of the Bible. I don't trust it. I don't want it bouncing around up here. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty particular about that. It would be like if there was somebody that I knew that I had caught more in, on more than one occasion, I had caught them lying to me. Um, should I should I be careful in the future about listening to them anymore? Absolutely, I don't know that I can trust what they say. Likewise, when people. Um, when I, when I hear pastors or teachers or lecturers or book writers or YouTube video experts or whatever, when I hear them handling the Word of God and it's not the King James Bible, I, I just don't, I, I don't care what they've come up with. I'm not, I'm not buying it. I don't, I don't trust it. And so um, there is another Jesus and it's not the one that's delineated and outlined and spelled out and shown who it is to be the, uh, from the King James Bible, and I don't trust it. Um, Joel goes on to say, I'm sure there are other issues that we don't agree on, but, you know, I can say that the Baptists and the Methodists and the Catholics don't all agree on everything, so that would be my take on it. So uh, 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 what was your take on it, Joel? What was it that you didn't say? Because, I mean, he, he didn't say a lot. He didn't say a lot. 
There was a lot that he didn't say, and he said, now that's my take on it, okay? Um, wow. So Joel Osteen, I, I don't know. I, you know, there's, there's being timid like I am, okay? And you would say, oh, Pastor Mike, you're not timid. You get me out of this room and get me out from behind my pulpit and, and get me out, I am timid. Okay, I'm timid. Now, if someone comes to me deliberately and says, do you believe such and such? I will, I will never back down. I'll say, yes, that's exactly what I believe. I believe that according to 1 John you know, 4, or I believe this according to Romans chapter whatever. I will tell you from the scripture exactly what I believe. Um, but when asked, when asked, specifically asked, and Osteen has been this way more than once, when specifically asked, is Mormonism a cult? Well, you know, I don't like to judge. Um, okay, what about Muslims? Are, are they going to go to, well, you know, Larry, I don't like to, you know, I don't want to say that. You know, that's up to God. Okay, what about uh, homosexuality? Is that, is that a sin? Are people going to go to hell? Well, you know, it's really not God's best, but, you know, I just don't like to judge. I don't want to be negative. And I, there's something wrong with you. Um, if, if that's how you are, there is, there's something wrong with you. All right. Um, you have a faith, don't you? You have a faith. Don't back down from it. Don't back down from the faith that you've been given. You don't have to. I, and you know, here again, I'm not someone who really looks forward to getting in somebody's face and saying, I think you ought to read the King James Bible. Okay, that's not me. I don't like personal confrontations. Um, I was talking to somebody today who uh, they visited our church, and I know them to be a friend of our ministry and a friend of me. Okay, and the Bible says, you know, faithful are the wounds of a friend. And I asked them specifically to help counsel me on, on you know, just kind of the course of this ministry and so on. And I want to hear from people. If, if I know that you genuinely are reaching out to me as my, as my friend, I'll listen to you all day long. But if I think you're just trying to uh, attack or I think you're just trying to, uh, to be ignorant with me um, over some idea that you think that you're just convinced I'm wrong in and you're right in, I generally will not spend a lot of time with you because I just don't like the confrontation. And if that is your nature, if that's the way God built you, okay, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. I have sat under some sermons, and, and I would say from probably some well-meaning pastors or evangelists or whatever, saying, shame on you for not street preaching. Shame on you for not knocking every door in the county. And shame on you for the, you ought to be out there doing this. And, and people are going, I, I can't do this. Well, God will give you the power to do it. That's not always the case. I do believe, however, when asked, when asked by somebody who is genuinely wanting to know the truth, I absolutely believe, and I've seen the most timid man in our church, and I won't tell who it is, the most timid man in our church, when asked, he never backed down. He told what he believed. And he said it. He said it with love and conviction and assuredness. But he was asked, and he said it. And uh, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. And if, and if you believe the Bible, you believe it to be the Word of God, you believe it to be the inspired, inerrant, only infallible rule of faith and practice and belief and philosophy and lifestyle and history and prophecy and everything else in the world, if you really believe that that's the case, then when God provides for you an opportunity, when someone says something to you and says, what do you think about that? Don't back down. Don't back down. You stand up for it. You stand up for it. 
Let me read some of your well-thought-out comments from the Pastor Mike Online. By, by the way, let me do a little check here. Uh, sermonaudio.com um, is uh, we're showing about 210 people have watched this so far. We really appreciate that. If you are any of those 202 people and you would like to send me some sort of little, a little chat email, this is a live interactive broadcast. And if you'd like to send me some sort of little note or comment or question or something like that, go to www.pastormikeonline.com or um, I think, I don't know if it works like this, I think you can send an email, um, or maybe I don't know, maybe I better not say. Just go to pastormikeonline.com and fill out the little thing there at the bottom and um, you, can, uh, you can send me a little uh, a little email note while I am live. Um, Jim has an article uh, from AccuWeather.com, Jet Crashes and Changing Winds with NASCAR's Hendrick uh, Board. I wonder what that, uh, I wonder what's up with that. Um, uh, let's see here. Oh! You know what? I, you know I want to do this. Let me let me click on a, a website here very quickly. Um, I want to check on something just to make sure. Okay. Um, okay. I I I think I think this is what I'm looking at. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe the scriptures. This right here, in uh, Genesis and in other places that describe giants and giant civilizations. I believe it. I believe they were very, very large. They were tall. They were huge. They were big. Uh, they, had, they had whole cities, civilizations. I believe all of that stuff. Be careful. Uh, there is uh, some things floating around on the Internet that I, I have suspicions. I've seen this before, I, and I was fooled by this before for a while. Uh, there, there are pictures floating around on the internet, supposedly of of archaeologists, you know, using their brushes and their chisels to chisel off these giant skeletons that have been found uh, in the desert. Be careful, be careful about passing that around. I don't know how to do it, but I know there's a. I listen. I am I'm dead serious about this. If you send me, or I, it, the, one of the reasons why, uh, let's say, let's get to this UFO thing. You go to YouTube and type in "amazing UFO video," okay, and you could probably watch 150 UFO videos, and 149 of them are going to be fake. They're going to be enhanced somehow, some way, by some guy who kind of knows what they're doing. And th that's the thing. The software is out there. Just about anybody can do this if they learn a few tricks. The same way with Photoshop. Um, several years ago, somebody sent me a picture of what looked like a, a, a someone excavating over this great, big, huge, gigantic human skeleton. And I'm going, oh, wow, they found it, man. It's cool. That's like the Bible's got going to like, you know, be like shown to be true, man. And, um, come to find out it was a hoax. Some guy had photoshopped, um, all this stuff in and it can be done. And so, and I'm not going to, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not going to read the name of who sent me this. I'm not going to embarrass you. Um, and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. Okay. But just because there's pictures floating around on the internet of what looks like giant, giant skeletons, I don't, I don't necessarily believe it. Okay. But I am going to later, I'm going to look at the site that you sent me and I really, really appreciate it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Hi, hi, Pastor Mike. Joanne says, uh, try using a humidifier in your home office. Uh, you can also get a spray bottle and mix some water and a little fabric softener and spray it on your sofa, car seats, etc. This may help with your static, <laughs> static problem. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, you know, that's, that's good advice. Uh, anything will help. Uh, but I'm still, if you, I mean, if you come around here during this time of year, like wintertime, something like that,